So this second part in this four part presentation will now focus on in situ chemical oxidation, um, utilizing a technology called Regenox. So what we talked about previously was how PetraCleanse, an enhancing desorption agent, can be used to improve the recovery rate of contamination or the, the efficiency of that pump and treat system through enhanced desorption. The thing is, enhanced desorption as a technology, as with pump and treat systems, will only get you so far with regards to cleanup goals. So when your uh, pump and treat system has reached an asymptote and you have completed some uh, enhanced desorption and augmented recovery, you could then start considering a technology like Regenox. Um, so Regenox is an in situ chemical oxidant, it's a bicarbonate based chemical oxidant. And we would typically reach for it as a technology on sites where, say, you have contamination uh, at concentrations that would suggest free phase, but you're not actually seeing any measurable free phase in, in the groundwater. Um, I normally say somewhere between 15 and 50 milligrams per litre TPH. Um, when I say TPH and, and use the 15 to 50 analogy, I actually mean a mixed diesel gasoline plume. Um, if we were talking about creosote or coal tar, for example, those numbers would change as they would change if we were looking at BTEX or, or just PAHs, for example. So when I say these numbers, I'm, I'm referring to a mixed diesel gasoline plume that you would typically see on a um, petrol filling station site. Um, the thing with chemical oxidation as a process, though, is that it relies on contact. So the oxidant and the contaminant must make contact with each other in order for that chemical oxidation reaction to occur. That's why you'll see that there's a bit of a, a curve, a, a hump in this graph. So where you have high levels of contamination, free phase contamination, um, essentially, the oxidant demand is too high and chemical oxidation isn't particularly efficient. At around 15 to 50 milligrams per litre, you're sort of in the, the sweet spot. Um, you've got enough contamination there that it isn't going to overwhelm um, the oxidant. But equally, you've got a high probability of that contact occurring. Now, at less than 15, 15 to 10 milligrams per litre TPH, the probability of that contact occurring, the oxidant and the contaminant making contact, starts to drop off. And it's at that point when you start to get that drop off, um, we would start reaching for uh, enhanced biological degradation, which we talk about in the next presentation. So for now, we're going to concentrate on uh, Regenox. Um, as a technology, though, just as a side note, it's probably the most widely used technology within my district. Um, so across the UK and Scandinavia, certainly, it's used probably every working day on sites from small um, heating oil spills to large industrial sites where they're um, remediating um, both petroleum hydrocarbons, but you can use this to treat chlorinated solvents and other organic contaminants as well. First of all, I'd just like to define what in situ chemical oxidation is, um, often referred to as ISCO. Um, it's the in-place treatment through the addition of a chemical oxidant. It's a non-biological process, so that's a key thing. Um, and it's a redox reaction between the chemical oxidant and the organic contaminant, which is becoming oxidized. And we'll drill into that in a bit more detail in a second. Um, there's a uh, a number of oxidation mechanisms, uh, direct chemical oxidation, uh, free radical chemical oxidation, and it can lead to rapid contaminant destruction. So when in Regenesis we're looking at different sites, we'll often not just ask you about the um, conceptual site model, so the, the more technical aspects of your project, we'll also ask you things um, with regards to the commercial drivers as well. Do you need a site to be cleaned up very quickly? Um, and into what level. And if you need a site to be cleaned up rapidly, then chemical oxidation as a technology um, it's, it should, should always be considered. Um, it's best suited to con high concentration areas. As I said before, it relies on contact. The higher the concentrations, um, the more likelihood that contact will occur. If you have free phase or measurable um, uh, TPH in, in the subsurface, then concentrations will be too high. Um, and the oxidant will get overwhelmed. And really broadly, I often use this technique for mass reduction 
So for sites where perhaps there aren't quantitative remedial goals, such as here in the UK, and you're just looking for substantial betterment, then chemical oxidation can be an option. Um, and in uh, places in Scandinavia where you have very stringent cleanup goals and elsewhere in Europe, um, you can use it to facilitate enhanced natural attenuation. Now, as part of this section, um, as part of this presentation, there isn't going to be a case study in the next uh, presentation where we look at uh, enhanced aerobic biological degradation. I'll present a case study where Regenox and uh, ORC Advanced, so ISCO and Enhanced Natural Attenuation or ENA, are used together to remediate a petrol filling station site. However, chemical oxidation historically had a lot of problems. Um, people would activate chelated metal, uh, activate persulfate uh, with chelated metals, resulting in large exothermic reactions that posed risks to on-site personnel and the people uh, handling these um, chemicals. It also had issues when integrating not only with pump and treat systems, but also other underground infrastructure, um, corroding pipes and tanks and, and cables, etc. Um, so there was a problem with regards to health and safety of, of commodity oxidants. And then there was a further issue with integration. Um, could it be used with um, pump and treat systems? Could this technology be used in and around uh, pumping equipment or underground services? And in some cases, it could actually inhibit biological degradation of certain organic contaminants. Um, if you were using a sulfate based chemical oxidant again uh, for uh, chlorinated solvents, it may be that you end up loading um, the subsurface with sulfates. So we developed Regenox to avoid these issues, it being a very safe to use technology. Um, it's often used in people's back gardens, um, so it's incredibly safe to use. It integrates well with other um, physical and biological treatment systems without compromising on um, treatment efficiency. Um, so it's still a very powerful oxidant to use. In terms of the technology, what it is, um, uh, Regenox is a two-part product um, that you mix uh, with water. Uh, the part A is uh, the percarbonate based chemical oxidant and then the part B is the iron silicate catalyst. Um, you combine them and mix them with water at about 8%. Um, if you are injecting them at, uh, if you're injecting them through direct push injection. Um, and you can then combine, inject and then target your uh, injection efforts where the contamination is. So for petroleum hydrocarbon sites, that's often in the top um, two to three meters of the aquifer. Um, some of the key benefits with Regenox is that it can treat a wide range of contaminants. It has this inbuilt catalyst, this part B, that we'll talk about in more detail further on in the presentation. And it also has significant longevity. So unlike some commodity oxidants that um, would uh, be injected and react incredibly quickly, um, essentially burning out before they can make contact with all the contaminants in the subsurface, um, we've slowed that chemical oxidation reaction down to give you a longer and enhanced residency time of two to four weeks after a single injection to ensure that you get maximum contract, uh, contact rather, and um, improve treatment um, efficiency and improved results. As I said, uh, as a technology, it can be used around underground infrastructure because you have this controlled release of hydrogen peroxide and it's uh, base activated. Um, so it will raise the pH of the aquifer temporarily. Um, so it can be used around pipes, uh, plastic pipes, cables, concrete and, and brick structures as well. In terms of how it works from a chemistry point of view, um, there's a series of uh, oxidation mechanisms. The first is the direct contact between the oxidant, so this is the bicarbonate um, oxidant, the part A, and the contaminant. So when those two make contact, there's an exchange of electrons, and then the uh, organic contaminant, in this case the petroleum hydrocarbons, are destroyed in situ. Uh, the second is the propagation of free radicals, so free radical mediated chemical oxidation. 
When injected into the subsurface, the part A will start to degrade just in the presence of uh, ambient um, salts and, and metals. And as it degrades, it will form these free radicals. So these are the main three that, it, that they form. And these free radicals, they're just um, highly reactive molecules with an unpaired electron. And so when they come into contact with an organic contaminant, they're, they're, they're there to, um, that you get that exchange of electrons and you get that contaminant destruction in situ. Finally, surface mediated chemical oxidation. So this is where the part B is applied into the subsurface and it will temporarily raise the pH. So it activates the part A by raising the pH of the aquifer to 11, but that is quickly buffered out in the soil and as that pH starts to return to neutral, so pH 7, this iron silicate catalyst will start to precipitate and it will act as a surface area to promote contact between the contaminant and the oxidant. Um, so this is where you get your second activation, if you like, to improve the reaction rate, to improve the likelihood of contact, to ensure that you get full degradation of uh, your, as much of your contaminants um, in situ after each application. Now, some of you may remember from the PetraCleanse discussion that we would typically recommend three applications of that technology, PetraCleanse, um, across the site, though sometimes it can be four, sometimes it can be one and a half. Um, Regenox is, is very much the same, but we would always say you want a minimum of two applications. Uh, the reason for this is down to um, where the contamination and how the contamination is distributed in the subsurface and also the mechanisms of chemical oxidation. So chemical oxidation as a process only occurs in the dissolved phase. So once you do a single application of Regenox, what you will find is you'll rapidly reduce your contaminant mass in the water. So here we go before, you've got contamination in, in the water and then also coating um, these uh, uh, soil particles here. You do your initial chemical oxidation reaction, you'll see that reduction in contaminant mass, but you've created a concentration gradient. So you're going to see desorption from the sorbed phase back into the groundwater. And actually often when you do a single application of any chemical oxidant, there can be uh, a masking of the amount of contamin contamination you have uh, removed because of this desorption effect. But the good news is a greater proportion is now in the groundwater. So it means that there's more contamination that is readily available for that chemical oxidation process to occur. So we would recommend a second application then of Regenox to further reduce your contaminant mass, but you're still likely to have some on the soil. So then we would uh, see desorption. So you see that rebound again, that partitioning, that desorption of uh, contamination from the soil into the groundwater, you do your second application to further reduce that contaminant mass. And it might be that at this stage, this level of mass reduction is enough for you to sign your site off. But more often than not, particularly if you have quantitative remediation targets, if you have set values you need to achieve on a particular site, then we would recommend that you undertake a biological polishing step to reduce that final residual mass in the subsurface. So that's why we would recommend a minimum of one is more typical, a minimum of two rather, it's more typically three applications. Um, just to touch on this, I won't go into it in too much detail, but there's often the thought that if you are doing an aggressive chemical oxidation exercise in the subsurface, you could sterilize the subsurface and then prevent further uh, natural attenuation of, of your contaminant in situ. Now for petroleum hydrocarbons in particular, um, this is something that's just simply not true. There's lots of papers that have been published on this, um, you know, not only on, on the Genox, but on the chemical oxidation as, as the treatment process. What you will see actually is for hydrocarbons, um, chemical oxidation and, and Regenox won't remove all of that contaminant mass in situ. Instead, what you'll end up with is uh, some intermediaries that might be uh, alcohols and other organic acids um, as well as petroleum hydrocarbons that are slightly more soluble and more bioavailable so you've actually created a byproduct that's much easier for these um, microbes to degrade in situ um, also in the shorter term 
you will have increased the oxygen levels in the groundwater. So creating envi an environment temporarily um, for the enhanced natural attenuation of petroleum hydrocarbons in situ. Now, the thing is, though, that you haven't delivered a controlled release of oxygen into the subsurface. It's likely that will be um, uh, utilized by the microbes um, very quickly. So you may see a flurry of activity initially after your chemical oxidation step, but that will soon start to peter out as that oxygen um, source is exhausted by the microbes. And that's then will take us on to the um, third part of this presentation, which is on enhanced natural attenuation and why we would more often than not pair Regenox with a technology called ORC Advanced. <laughs> 